Hello and welcome to another ChatGPT video. And in this video, I'll be looking at ChatGPT Vision, which is the way ChatGPT can interpret photographs. I'm not going to look at generated images. That's for another video that I'll do. But what I want to do is, is look at how we can look at different images and get ChatGPT to help us understand what's in there. So I'll be looking at eight different images in this video. The first one here, is a picture of all eight that we're looking at. I'll ask it to do a translation, which is very complex. I'll be looking at a picture of a, an old marketplace. We'll do some very interesting things with a pantry. I'll ask ChatGP to identify a landscape. I'll date and identify a picture of one of my old relatives. I've got a couple of documents here, some old documents that I'll ask ChatGPT to interpret and transcribe. I've got a very poorly written letter from one of my ancestors and I'm going to ask ChatGPT to see how it can maybe transcribe and, and tell me what's written in that letter. And then I've got an old newspaper cutting that I really want to convert into a Word document. So we're really asking ChatGPT to look at images and work with me as my assistant to interpret those images. And you will be absolutely blown away with how it can work. So the first one we'll look at is the translation. So here we are at the document for translation. And before we get started with ChatGPT, just a couple of things I want to uh, point out. First of all, AI makes mistakes. So it's never gonna be 100% correct. Always needs human input to look at these documents to make sure that whatever you've asked ChatGPT to do or interpret is correct. And secondly, words matter. So how you write the prompt will really direct ChatGPT to do what you're really asking it to do. And if it doesn't do the right thing the first time, then ask it again. So here we are with the document, so we can close this document. And what I've done here, and a way to get the best results from a translation, is I've asked, this is a document in Polish, please translate and transcribe line by line. So I'm clearly telling ChatGPT exactly what I want it to do. I don't want it to summarize, I want it to translate this and transcribe it line by line. And basically we, we can see transcription here in Polish and then the translation. And I could now actually get this to write it to a Word document, but I don't know Polish, but I, I get on good authority that this is a very good translation. And I could take this and copy it somewhere else. So very quick. It seems to be better than some tools. It's not going to be perfect, but it will give you a really good start. So just imagine the power you've got here. This is a document. I didn't tell ChatGPT anything about it other than it was Polish. Now, as we move forward, the more we tell ChatGPT about a document, the better results we have. So let's move on to the next one, which is image interpretation. And I've moved over here to a document, let me go back up here. This is an old postcard I have. And this is of my hometown of Hull. And I'm not even gonna tell ChatGPT where this is. It's just an old picture. And what I'm gonna ask ChatGPT is please review this image and describe it. In addition to describing the image, please tell me what signage you can identify and give me a list of different elements. So I've not told it anything about this picture. I've not told it the date or where it was taken. And it can read here, it says marketplace hall, so it knows it's the marketplace hall. And it describes the scene in some detail. Very, very good. And now it identifies the signage and gives me a list of elements. So there's a tea and coffee house, there's a company called Bristol and Company, and there's a sign for tilers. And it gives me a list of elements here. As you can imagine, the amount of complexity that ChatGPT has to do on a vision, so it's describing it to me. Now I can continue to ask questions about the image I've given ChatGPT. So it told me there was Bristow and Company. So I've said, do you have any more information about Bristow and Company? And basically it searched four sites here, and I can see the sites it looked at. If I click on here, and it gives me an overview, and basically the answer is, I don't quite know. But it gives me, an overview and it tells me I should really look at the whole history center and I've said can you give me details about the whole history center 
and now it gives me all the details about the whole history center and where I could go and actually find even down to the parking. So remember we started off with this image and now I can interpret this and take it to a lot more detail and if ChatGPT can help me out, it can actually point me in the right direction. So let's go on to the pantry that I showed you earlier on and this will really blow you away. I think so in my opinion. So this is a vintage image of a pantry. And what I've asked ChatGPT to do, not giving it any information, this is a vintage image of a pantry. Please date the image and give me a list of the food items on the first two shelves. So just imagine the kind of interpretation of a photograph that we need to do. And basically it tells me uh, what those things are. Top shelf, Winsome Whole Red Beets, Wayne Brand Tomatoes, and Ben Hare Brand Cloves on the middle shelf. So it gives me all the information there. And now I'm going to ask it to do is something a little bit more complicated. Say, using the list of items in the picture, please create a modern equivalent shopping list US based. Now I could do anything I liked here. And now it's created me a shopping list. It's taken what it's seen in the image and now it's going whole red beets as we saw earlier on, whole red, wins the whole red beets. And now it's saying the modern equivalent is Del Monte Olibis, canned tomatoes, Hunts of Muir Glen, and so on. And so it goes through all the 22 items in this shelf, in this 50s shelf, gives me all the things that are in there, and now it gives me the 22 equivalents. So the amount of interpretation of power, I can imagine if you tried to do this manually, this probably would take you a day or more. So anyway, that's very complicated. Let's try and do something a little bit more easy, I would guess and ask ChatGPT to look at a picture and tell us where that picture is taken from. So here we are, a picture. Now, many, many people know where this is. This is Edinburgh, Scotland, but ChatGPT doesn't. And I'm gonna ask it again, as I told you earlier on, devil's in the detail. I said, can you suggest a location of the photograph? And I don't want it just to tell me where it is. I want to know why it thinks it's there. So I explain your reasoning. And again, with ChatGPT, where it's matter. So this photograph depicts a cityscape with notable historic and architectural landscapes. And it goes through the reasoning, Edinburgh Castle, Balmoral Hotel, Scott Monument, architectural sky. And obviously it is likely to be Edinburgh, Scotland. And so not only do I know where this is, I can understand the reasoning and maybe the reasoning is not correct. And it says it strongly suggests Edinburgh. So maybe it's not Edinburgh, but it probably is. Okay, so this is, again, we can take some images if they're well known, uh, and it will or more often than not get them right. I've tried this with some esoteric photographs of landscapes of cities that are not well known, and more often than not, it gets it wrong. So if it's a well-known landmark, a well-known place, a capital city, it'll get it right. If you take a picture of a small village, is probably going to get it wrong. The thing with ChatGPT though is it it always it fills a vacuum. So you've got to understand sometimes it will get it wrong. So let's go on to identifying and dating a photograph. We'll go over here to the British soldier. So here's a picture of one of my great uncles that fought in the First World War. And I've not used the colorized version. I have some better pictures than this, but I'm using the original picture. And what I've asked ChatGPT to do is please date describe this photograph and focus on any items that will indicate a regiment. So not only do I want some dating about this, but I want it to tell, try and tell me a regiment. We, in genealogy, we try and do this all the time. We try and date and find information about photographs. So it tells me it's a British soldier. I've not told it, you know, this could be anybody, but it says a British soldier likely from World War I. And it tells me why it believes it's World War I from the uniform. It's British Army Service Dress Uniform a cap badge, sort of tiles, and so on. So it goes through this and it makes a very good pitch on why this should be from the First World War, 1914 to 1918. But I'm really interested in trying to find out what regiment this would be. So with ChatGPT, you can prompt it to give you more information. So I said, could you make some suggestions as to what regiment it might have belonged to? So now ChatGPT goes through the parts of the uniform that would indicate the regiment and a cap badge. And 
he comes up with some suggestions, Royal Fusiliers, Yorkshire Light Infantry, Duke of Cornwall, and now it comes here and gives it the four suggestions of, of all the British regiments. Well, actually, I do know that my uncle was in the Yorkshire Light Infantry. So, ChatGPT found, it, it didn't identify completely, but it found one of four possibilities, and one of those four possibilities was the correct one. Now, I could have narrowed it down more precisely by giving ChatGPT an image of a cap badge that it could have used to focus more on the regiment. But as you can imagine, th this would have taken me days. In fact, back, back in the day, it did take me days. So anyway, that's very good. So let's now look at some documents that we could transcribe. And this is actually a very fairly unusual document. This is a, a Mariner's Paybook uh, from the UK. So this is part of my genealogy and you can see it's not a great image. The writing is pretty poor on that. But let's give this to ChatGPT and see what it can do. And I'm gonna tell it it's a maritime document, give it a little bit of help. And again, as I've said earlier, the more I tell ChatGPT about what it's dealing with, the more it will be accurate in, in its findings. So now it goes through the columns and it actually gives the entries. It transcribes this very well. And we can go back and see that the first one is W long and it comes in and actually goes through the different columns and tells me about the entries. And down, it, down at the end, it says several empty rows, suggesting the document was meant to be record more crew member details, but they were even not filled in. So again, I could actually use this more uh, but it's giving you a really good translation and transcription and even to the pound signs where the, these mariners were paid in pounds. So let's look at something slightly more different. I'm going to look at a census record from the UK as well or from England. So here we are at the 1911 census for England and Wales. And again, you can see this. This is very, very poorly written. It's a bit blurry. Um, and I'm going to ask ChatGPT to transcribe this for me, but I'm going to give it a little bit more information. I'll give it a little bit of help. As I've been saying all the way through this video, the more I tell ChatGPT about what it's looking at, the more accurate it's going to be. So I've told it this image is from the 1911 England census for the family of Charles Dixon. Please read the column headings, transcribe the information about the people in the entry, ignore any information that is crossed out. That's pretty important. Go back to that document, there's information crossed out here. And I'm again telling ChatGPT, ignore that. I don't want you to try and transcribe what's crossed out. And it gives me the column headings and then it gives me a really nice transcription. Children born alive, children still living, the children at home. And it's telling me that the table includes the non-crossed out person for each listed census entry. And we can go, it's created a nice little neat table. I could actually now just uh, go and drop that in a spreadsheet if I wish. So that is really, really nice. It would, again, take me a long time to do that. And this is pretty much what we'd see Ancestry and those kind of tools doing anyway. Uh, but if I've got my own hard copy, I can do this, but always check for accuracy. So now let's try something a little more complex for ChatGPT. Let's go over and look at a letter uh, that was written to one of my relatives and the handwriting is pretty poor. So this is the letter and it's it's been photocopied. You can see it's very cursive and it's not very clear. And actually it's written in a very strange way or being copied in a strange way. This is page one here on the right hand side. This is page four on the left hand side. If I look at the other document, page two is on the left hand side. Page Sorry, page two is on the right hand side and page three is on the left hand side. So if I was to actually transcribe this, I'd be moving backwards and forwards. And the writing is pretty difficult to read. I could zoom into it. It's not like a manuscript, but it's going to take me some time. So let me ask ChatGPT uh, what it can do with these documents. Now, as I keep saying, the more I tell ChatGPT what it's dealing with, the better result I'm going to get. So I'm going to tell these, these two images are of a letter. This letter has four pages, one image one image 8A, which is the name of the document, has page 4 on the left and page 1 on the right. The other one is page 3 on the left, page 2 on the right. There is a white space down the middle separating the pages. Please give a summary of the letter, transcribe it, and put it in the correct sequence. So I've asked it to do a lot. 
First of all, it's got to read the document, figure out which of the pages. It's got to read the cursive handwriting and give me what it's what it's come up with. So here's the results. It tells me it's going to do that and it transcribes it first of all. And uh, it goes through the transcription. Now, I've gone through the transcription myself. There are some errors in this, um, but it gives me a really good start. And the errors are fairly minor. But it gives me a summary. This letter is from John Longman to his grandson, Tom. I didn't tell you that. It figured that out, congratulating him on reaching the age of 21. So again, with images, it's so powerful. It's taken just an image and it's figured out what the context of the image is. Uh, he regret, expresses regret for not remembering Tom's birthday, gives him advice. And here's the correct sequence. And here's the complete transcription in the correct sequence. And again, I could now take this and move it to a document. Um, and as I said, this is one of my old documents I've transcribed myself. There's one or two minor ones. Um, and it actually points out, if you see where it's green and red here, these are areas it's had slight difficulty, but it's missed some things. Uh, you can see it's the birth and day, but it's 95% correct. And I could just go through this and use this as a basis. So again, using ChatGPT, rarely 100% correct, but it gets you to 90%, 80% of the way there. So that's looking at a very, very complex letter. It's transcribed it, it's put it in the right order, and it's basically read the cursive. Now, finally, I'll do something a little more simple. I'll look at a, a newspaper cutting and ask it just to convert this into a Word document. Now, that's another powerful thing with ChatGPT Vision. I can compare and contrast things from one type of image into a document or vice versa. So let me move to the last one. And this is, uh, in fact, the, the person who wrote the letter previously, this is John Longman. So the, we're now getting a little bit of perspective in my family history. So this is the guy who wrote the letter we just previously transcribed. And this is a obituary in the newspaper. And what I want ChatGPT to do is take the, the text here and maybe the title, and, and, and transcribe it to me into a document so I can move this into my research papers. And fairly simply, I can just say, please read the text from the newspaper and transfer the results into a Word document. And it will do this and here's a doc document. I can download that file. It'll appear at the top. And um, then I've got, asked it to show the output in the chat just for so you can see what it did and it's, it really just transcribed that. But it's actually written it to a Word document uh, that I can use now, copy to anywhere. Okay, so this just shows the power. We've gone through nine different images, if you like, and looked at images in different ways. Now this just shows the power, and I've only really just scratched the surface of ChatGPT Vision. Now there are some specialist programs for dealing with images, and they may the things and look at things and, and transcribe things a little bit better. But ChatGPT for a broad tool like it is, it's perfect. Now I'm using the subscription model, which I'm paying $20 a month for. You can do some of this in a free model, but a free model just works with what's available. So if there's a lot going on or you try and use it too much, it will cut you off. So what I would suggest for genealogists or researchers, just pay $20 for a month, do what you need to do, and then cancel the, uh, uh, the subscription. I really hope this has been useful. I hope you've seen the power of ChatGPT Vision. Uh, it's just a wonderful tool for any researcher, especially in genealogy. Uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing some more research type ChatGPT videos in the future, especially one around generating images. Uh, which will be of interest to many people. Thank you and have a great day and good luck with your research and good luck with using ChatGPT.